up guys and welcome back to another learn paint fail and repeat this is another episode in the ongoing series that i plan on doing that just showcases a new or different model that you can follow along and paint and try and have some fun we're going to try out some new things today and some things maybe you've never tried before so get out of your comfort zone a little bit and let's see what happens starting with vallejo surface primer black I'm going to do the entire black coach, and then I'm going to come back with Daler and Rowney's sepia ink through the airbrush, and just start to put a little bit of brown into this coach. So some of the main places you want to focus this brown are in areas that might eventually end up rusting. So if there's any metal touching wood, you kind of want to concentrate some of that brown there so that when we come back with some of the later steps, it kind of reinforces that rusting seepage into the wood. All right, so it's time for our first major bravery test, as the good old Bob Ross would say. AK Interactive's dust effects across the entire model on all of the wood. And what this is going to do, because it's an enamel wash, is it's going to slightly stain everything, just slightly, but it's going to leave a lot of that white and dusty pigment in all of the recesses in the wood, bringing that wood grain out really nicely. Now, of course, this being the black coach, we're not just going to leave all of this white on there. We're going to come back in with a cloth and wipe a lot of that off, just leaving that white in the recesses. And even though we're not too worried about overspilling at this point in time, if you did get this on something you really didn't want to, you can come back in with some odorless mineral spirits and a brush and just kind of wipe all that away. As you can see, after it's all been wiped away, the recesses are filled in really nicely and it gives a really nice ghostly dust effect. Coming back in with the sepia ink through the airbrush, we're going to reinforce a lot of those areas that we hit before, as well as the centers of kind of each one of these planks. We want to put a little bit of a gradient in the middle of those planks so that there's a little more interest going on and it's not just a straight kind of grayish tone. We want to have that color shifting around just a little bit so we have a little more variation in the coach overall. Continuing to build on that color variation, we're going to introduce some of this dark green ink. Now, this is going to be a really light coat over just a few select parts of the model. So I'm looking at the undersides of the kind of the main body and kind of in the driver's chair, things like that, and places where there might be that ethereal bale fire later on. So right here, kind of next to that skull, is where you can see it the most. Putting on really light coats and having this green blend with those browns and the whites just makes it so that when you look at it, especially at certain angles, you just get a little tiny bit of color variation and it just adds to the overall feel that this is kind of an undead, broken down coach. With Vallejo's Rust Wash, I'm going to go over any of the parts that would be some kind of steel, some kind of metal that isn't, you know, copper, bronze, whatever. 
And the reason that we're doing this before we put the metal on is because we want this to mix with our other colors first and then we'll come back and kind of paint the metal in but in a very select manner. Because all of the areas that we are painting attach to wood in some way, we want to make sure to feather some of this rust out into that wood so it just stains everything and it mixes with those other colors making it look like you know, this has been around for quite a long time and the rust and decay has just permeated throughout the entire structure. So let's take a closer look at the way that this rust actually ends up looking. So you can see on the left right here where it's been on, I put it on probably five minutes before, and you can see how that's mixed with the white enamel and given it a little bit different look to normal rust, especially on the wood. It, it makes it look like it's deep in the wood instead of just on the surface. And the new stuff is a lot brighter, but you know, you can see that it's going to dull down and it's going to mix with the stuff that we already have going on very nicely. In order to tie everything together, we're going to be using Vallejo pigments, starting with the black um, charcoal pigment. We're going to go onto a lot of the larger areas and just stipple and dry brush that over where we want that darkness to be. And this is gonna do a couple of things for us. It's gonna give us a lot more depth in our wood and it's gonna keep everything really matted down. So anywhere that there would be something shiny like an ink or you know even some of these washes, it's gonna dull that down and it's gonna make this look way more like aged dark black wood than plastic. Also, before anything is finished on the coach, we're going to be locking all of this pigment in using a varnish. And that's just going to ensure that everything stays matte and fingers don't wipe a lot of this stuff off. During this whole process, I've been putting the top of the coach on and off. So a lot of this stuff has been, you know, pieced out and it hasn't been glued together yet. 
and I'm taking the stuff off so I can reach some of the harder to reach areas and then putting it back on just to double check and make sure that everything is staying consistent. Coming in with our first actual acrylic paint in Vallejo Gunmetal. I'm going to pick out all of the little nails and rivets and anything that is actually metallic that's pretty small on the model. And then I'm going to come back in and start to stipple on and edge highlight some of these larger metallic pieces just so, you know, it's kind of like the rust has covered up all of this metal, but there's just a little bit, you know, kind of on the sharper edges still showing through. So realistically, when it comes to most of these effects that we've been doing, you can kind of get away with a lot. And what I mean by that is that you don't necessarily need these specific products to get a look like this. In a lot of cases, you know, if you've been painting for a long time, you've just ended up with a lot of different things. So it's really nice to just have something on hand. But it also kind of takes the creativity out of some of it, too. You know, I want a matte black finish that looks powder coated. So I reach for a black powder. Now, back when I started, I didn't really, I couldn't afford to buy all of this stuff. And it's taken years to get there. But I would go out and get pastels, you know, really cheap from a, an arts and craft store. And I would grind them up and use that as a pigment. And it worked pretty well. So there are still alternatives and inexpensive ones to doing a lot of this stuff. Even when it comes down to, you know, the enamel washes and the inks, you can achieve those things with Games Workshop paints. By watering down a white or a gray, you can get that whitewash. Then you can come back with browns and blacks and greens and dry brush them over this really nice texture to get that kind of effect. So don't let products stand in your way of your creativity. Use what you have on hand and try different things to achieve the result that you're looking for. With Abaddon Black, Nagaroth Knight, and Corn Red, we're going to start to work on the curtains on the top half of this coach. Now I've put all three of the colors on my palette and a little bit of water to start mixing. We're going to try and wet blend some of these colors together to get a nice even coat with a lot of variation. So starting with a little bit of Abaddon Black and Nagaroth Knight, we're going to water this down a good amount so that it's pretty wet when it goes on and we're going to cover the entire curtain. Then we're going to take a little bit more Abaddon Black, mix that in, and start to layer that into the shadows, trying to mix that into that purple so that it's a nice even transition. Then we're going to come back with a little bit more of that corn red and put that on the top parts of the curtains to give us our nice highlight. And this is going to start us off for the next step, which will be a lot of glazing the colors in to brighten those curtains up. So after all that blending is done, you can see there's a nice variety of those colors. They're nice and blended together. Uh, we've got a lot of red on those kind of highlight points. And now we're going to take some more of that red mixed in with just a little bit of purple. We're going to mix that down into a glaze and just start layering that over the top of our brightest highlights.
So far in this video, I've been playing everything back at a standard speed. And that's just so you can see what I'm doing in a little bit more detail than I usually do in my videos. I'm usually at two or three times the speed for most of the painting. But I thought for something like this, it would be easier for you to see what exactly I was doing at a normal speed. Now when you're glazing this red in, what we're doing is we've mixed in the corn red to that purple. And we're just trying to build that highlight up really slowly over several layers because every time the paint dries, it deepens into the rest of that color and it mixes. And that's kind of the whole idea behind glazing is that you want to build that up really slowly so you have a nice transition without any brush strokes or any kind of harsh lines. So right here, we've added a lot more of that red into that and we're just trying to keep it tighter on those highlights. And we're always dragging our brush towards the area that we want that pigment to settle because it's mostly water so when you're pulling that along what you're doing is you're depositing some of that pigment and it's settling where you end your brush stroke and on top of that wherever you have brushed that paint onto it's beginning to tint the colors underneath so the more you do it that new color becomes brighter and brighter and it takes over the color underneath for the undersides of the curtains, I decided to go with another Vallejo pigment. And this time I'm going to use brown. And that's just to say that all of the inside of this is just disgusting and dirty. And that just kind of fits with the whole theme. So I'm going to go over all of the inside. And then coming back with Nagaroth Knight into a layer, I'm going to paint kind of the ends of each one of those curtains. So if you do happen to see inside of it, then you'll still get the sense that these are purple. They're just really, really dirty. To finish off our curtains, we're going to do some stippling with Cadian Flesh Tone. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring that red out a lot more wherever we put this on. It's also going to create our brightest highlight. And it's going to give that appearance to our curtains of being really tattered and torn from all the wind. Coming in with Vallejo's Copper, we're going to do a little bit more variation on our actual metallics and we're going to use this on a lot of the small adornments that are scattered around the model. 
There are the skulls on either side, and a majority of the coffin has a ton of different little things all over it. So now that that copper is laid on, you can see that that green in the wood has been brought out quite a bit. And a lot of that is because, you know, when you look at a copper, you think of what it does in the weather. So we are going to end up coming back with a little bit of weathering on that copper and that's going to tie in with our greens a lot more. So I want to take a minute, kind of three quarters of the way through this video and talk a little bit about where this model came from and the story behind it. Originally, this was going to be a rescue project and it kind of turned into something else. So Luis H sent this in, him and his wife wanted this painted and originally he had a partially painted black coach that he ended up gifting to a friend right before he was about to send it to me. So instead he sent me a brand new one that he assembled before sending. So the story behind this model and why they asked me to paint it is something that I think everyone should hear. And I'm going to read what Louise sent me. And I hope that's okay, Louise. Uh, we talked about it a little bit. And I know you weren't expecting me to just verbatim read what you sent me. But I honestly found it pretty touching, and I think that it would benefit a lot of people to hear. So the first thing in the email was a little bit about the black coach, and how it feeds on anguish and torment and basically negative things, and becomes stronger. Here's what he had to say about this model. For me, in my younger years, my family lived in poverty. We were so poor, my parents could only feed me and my brother one plate of soup a day. No meat, just the basics, and that meant my parents would simply have to eat a tortilla with salt, because there simply wasn't more we could afford. This lasted many years, from when I was born until I was ten. We always struggled. But even then, that only made us stronger. When we finally came to the United States, we had to go through a lot because we didn't speak the language and my parents had to start from scratch. But we pulled through no matter how much I was made fun of for not speaking the language clearly. We always pulled through. My wife lost her mom to a sickness that started to immobilize her until she couldn't really move anymore. And through all that, she would be the one to take care of her and help her. She also has a handicapped sister, one year older, and she's always been there for her too. My wife has been like a mom to her sister, and even when we got married, we had her live with us for a couple of years until she could settle in with her dad. Through our marriage, we've had our ups and downs many times, but we always get back up and get stronger. My wife has changed so much from being very fragile and insecure to being confident and tough. And that has really helped me too, because I know I can always count on her. And she has always been really supportive of me. And so I do my best every day to give back to her the best of me. So this model helps me remember that. We always have challenges. Everyone does, and challenges aren't made to be easy or fun. They put you through struggles that sometimes seem impossible, but when you pull through, you get stronger and keep going on to the next challenge. So that's why we chose this model. Plus, it looks great. So I thought that this was pretty compelling as a story behind any model. And I mean, you know, when it comes down to it, these are 
plastic miniatures that we play games with. And if you can find people to enjoy life together with and to play games and be reminded that, you know, life is real, then I think our models kind of transcend that plastic on the table and become something a lot more. So thank you, Luis, for sharing that with me and everyone else. And I hope you enjoy your model and that it reminds you that struggle is there to make us stronger. And you and your wife have a very happy life. With Rhinox Hide, I'm going to start filling in a lot of the leather that's this kind of mummified corpse inside the coffin. And realistically, you can use whatever colors you want here, whatever you feel is appropriate, because for the most part, this is all going to be covered up. Now, you can see this guy a lot more than you could the old school pewter black coach, but it's still kind of the same idea. He's mostly covered. You kind of get glimpses of color here and there. So I went with really dark leather and kind of bright leather banding to just give the appearance that something inside was tied down in a sack. And the metallic helmet just kind of ties in with the other copper that we have going on. So a little bit of light will reflect off of that if it gets in at the right angle. Um, but for the most part, like I said, you can choose whichever colors you think would work best. I decided to throw some contrast snake bite leather into the mix here. I ended up doing an all over wash with this on the guy in the coffin. And mostly this just kind of tinted the colors. It brought the browns together a little bit closer. It put a little bit of shading into the recesses, which is nice. Um, kind of gave everything this grungy, dirty look to it, which is pretty much what this entire coach is all about. Um, one thing I wasn't actually thinking about was that any of the silver parts, because they're bright and kind of white, would just turn a copper color with this brown. So I thought I would use a large makeup brush and some of this gunmetal to give a really nice, soft, metallic appearance to a majority of these wheels. And in the end, I'm looking at it as a complete mistake on my part it really didn't work how i wanted it to um it covered up some of the other details you know within the center where the wood was on the tires already and it just didn't work out so we're going to come back to this later with something else for now we're going to move on to nylic oxide mixed 70 30 water to nylic oxide and we're going to go over a lot of the copper parts just to give it some patina and we're going to do kind of the same thing that we did with the rust Bring it out into the wood just a little bit, not too much, because we don't want it to overwhelm the darkness, as it were. But we're going to put that on lightly and kind of build it up slowly into places where water would pool on this coach. Thank 
So this is where doing that snake bite leather ended up kind of being one of those happy accidents. And what I mean by that is that the silver was turned into a copper color and because of the way the contrast works it ended up pooling and giving that silver just a little bit of a highlight so that it looks like highlighted copper. So coming back in with this nylic oxide, you know, it made sense to weather that a little bit you know, kind of in this lock hole and on some of the chains they've been sitting and just getting wet and tattered. And it ended up working out. So don't forget that sometimes accidents happen, mistakes happen. Try and embrace that and look for opportunities to make it better. With Vallejo's black metallic, we're gonna do those wheels. So I'm gonna go over and actually paint all of these wheels. And because it's a black metallic, it fits in with the theme really well, but it still has a shine to it at certain angles. And I like this a lot better. So we're gonna end up coming back with some weathering pigments to kind of go over some of these parts just to tie it in with the rest of the coach. But this color I thought was a much better choice for these wheels. This also marks the end of the first part of this Black Coach series that I'm doing. In a couple weeks, I'm gonna come back with part two, and we're gonna look at a lot of the ethereal stuff, all the ghosts, the horses, and how to tie that together. I have to say, I'm really enjoying this model so far, and I hope you're enjoying watching it. And if you want to participate, I'll be posting the second half of this video in two weeks time. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Please like and share if you enjoyed something about this video. I will also be posting this on Facebook when it's all done, and I would love to see your take on the Black Coach. 
I will also be putting this up on the eBay Miniature Rescues Instagram account using the hashtag BlackCoachEMR. That way, if anyone else wants to post something up on Instagram, use that hashtag so we can all see your awesome black coaches. Thank you again for joining me on another episode of Learn, Paint, Fail, and Repeat. I am Casey, and I will see you in the next video.